In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a really simple implementation of Google Maps in an Ionic 2 application. I have some more advanced tutorials on some more advanced uh, setups and configurations uh, for Google Maps. Uh, so I'll link to those uh, in the description if you want to check those out. Uh, but this is just going to be a, a bare bones example of getting set up with Google Maps. And before I get into it, I want to talk about the difference between the Google Maps JavaScript SDK and the native SDKs. So what we're looking at on screen now is the documentation for the uh, JavaScript SDK. And so that's uh, Maps running through uh, JavaScript, and it's all run through the browser. Uh, but there's also native SDKs available so that it uses uh, the native code on the device uh, as well. So we can either use this uh, JavaScript SDK directly in an Ionic 2 application, or you can use a plugin, a Cordova plugin, to use the native SDK. And so if you just take a look at uh, this part of the documentation uh, for Ionic Native, you can see there's an entry for Google Maps. Uh, so you can use this uh, Google Maps Ionic Native uh, service here uh, in conjunction with the Cordova plugin to make implementing that a bit easier. So if you want to use the native SDK, you just have to install this plugin and supply your API keys for both Android and iOS. And then there's some documentation in here about how to actually create a map. Now, usually I would advise to use Ionic Native for things. Uh, it makes things a lot easier in general. Uh, but this is one case where I would recommend not using the native SDK for Google Maps. Now, some people may uh, have a different opinion on this uh, and you may want to use this in certain circumstances, but in general, I think it's better to use the JavaScript SDK instead of the native SDK. The problem with the native SDK is that it can't run in a browser environment. So when we're using the JavaScript SDK, our Arnic 2 application is running through a browser. It's all web-based code. And so it makes sense to use the JavaScript SDK because that is also uh, web-based and it just integrates nicely with it. The native SDK isn't web-based. It can't run through a browser. So to get it to work, uh, it's basically a, a little hack. The Cordova plugin will create a native view behind the web view, and it just kind of makes the browser transparent in the locations where the native map sits. So you're kind of looking through the browser into a native element. Now, I have a, another tutorial that sort of uh, has a little diagram of this to explain it a bit better but in the end it's kind of this hack and it does work but it can make things really complicated uh, if you want to have multiple maps or uh, you want things just to work the way you'd expect them to they often don't when using the native SDK and you end up implementing a lot of workarounds just to get things working so I would advise against using this in uh, by default uh, but if there's certain if there's a certain reason that you want to, uh, the native SDK does look a bit nicer than the JavaScript SDK. Um, there may be specific uh, functionality that you want to implement and that's fine. Uh, that, may, that may make sense for your application. Uh, but just as a default, I would say go with the JavaScript SDK. So to get this set up in our application, we have to uh, reference the uh, JavaScript SDK and they have a example down here uh, just for setting it up in a normal sort of HTML environment. And you see there's a script here. And so what we're going to do is just grab this. Uh, all we need is this first bit. Um, there is an option for a key here. And uh, if you want to use this sort of in a production environment, I'd advise generating uh, keys for Google Maps. Uh, basically, it's a way for them to track how much you're using, uh, how many times you're hitting their APIs. And if you go over a certain threshold, you're going to have to pay for that. Uh, those thresholds are very high, so as far as development goes, you don't need to worry about hitting those limits. But if you are going to be submitting this to the App Store, it's good to have that in place in case you do end up hitting those limits. And the callback here is just a, uh, a function that's going to get called when the maps have finished loading. And so we're not going to worry about doing that in this case. Like I said, I do have a more advanced example available that makes use of this callback function to uh, do something when the map finishes loading. Uh, but for now, we're just going to do really basic implementation. So I'm going to grab that script there and I'm going to jump into uh, Sublime. I've already generated a application here. It's just based on the blank template. So if you want to code along, just generate that now and then come into the source folder here. And we're just going to add that 
to index.html. So we'll just put that underneath the ion app there and I should fill out script tag as well. Okay, so that's going to load in that JavaScript SDK into our application now. So before we go any further, let's just serve our application so we can see what's happening as we're coding. Okay, so we just have our blank application running now and you can see uh, in the console over here, it's warning us that we haven't got any APIs, uh, API keys set for Google Maps. So again, if you're going to be using this in a production environment, you should generate those. Okay, so what we're going to do now is set up uh, the map itself. So to start off with, we're going to have to uh, add a little bit to our template. So we're just going to modify the home template here. And I'm going to get rid of the padding and we just need to set up a container that is going to be used to inject the map into. So we'll just create a div and we're going to uh, create a local variable called map that we're going to reference in our TypeScript file, which is going to just allow us to grab a reference to that element. And we're also going to need to style uh, this container later. So I'm going to give it an ID so that we can grab that from our SCSS file. So that's all we need to do in here. Now we're just going to jump into the TypeScript file and we're going to grab a, uh, a reference to that using view child. So this will allow you to grab a reference to things in your templates. Uh, so you can do the at symbol, then view child, and then we can supply that local variable we created, which was map. And then we're going to assign this to a member variable called map element. And then we're going to need to use that element uh, to initialize a new map. So what I'm going to do is create an ion view did load hook here. And this is going to trigger as soon as uh, the view is ready. And when that happens, we're going to call a function called init map. And we're just going to define that under here which is going to contain our code for setting up the map. Uh, in a real application, it'd probably be better to separate this out into its own provider, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to do it all in here. So first we'll need to create a, a latitude and a longitude that we want to display. So we're going to create a variable for that. And I've just got a um, some values here that will center on Adelaide, uh, which is my hometown. Uh, so I'm just going to use those, but you can use whatever values you like. Uh, you can even use, say, the geolocation service to grab the user's current coordinates so you can center it on the user's current location. And again, that's something that I have covered uh, in those other tutorials I mentioned. So we need to do new google.maps.latlong, and then we just apply the latitude and longitude values. And we're also going to define some uh, map options which is uh, just going to tell the SDK how we want to configure this map. So we're going to set the center of the map to that uh, latitude and uh, longitude we just created. We're going to set the zoom level to 15 and we're also going to set the type of map we want. Uh, so if we do a map type ID, we can set that to either say a satellite or a road map. Uh, so if we want to just use a normal road map, we can do google.maps.maptypeid.roadmap. And now we can create the uh, map itself. So I'm going to add another member variable up here to hold a reference to that. And then we're going to define it on this.map. I'm going to make that equal new google.maps.map. And then we need to supply the element that we want to create it on, which is this dot map element, which we grabbed a reference to up here. And we want the actual uh, element itself, which we can access through native element. And then we just need to supply the map options as well. So I'll save that and we'll see what happens. And we are, we should get an error. So you can see here it's saying cannot find name Google. So we've included this uh, JavaScript SDK, we're loading it in, and we're trying to access this Google object that it makes available. Uh, but TypeScript uh, doesn't know about that. To, to TypeScript, it just thinks we've just written this Google thing, and it has no idea what it is, uh, and it thinks we've made some kind of mistake. So it's warning us about that. 
uh, to fix that, we need to add the uh, the types for Google. Uh, so a quick workaround that you can do is you can just say declare var uh, Google to solve any sort of type issues like that. Uh, but I guess the more uh, proper way to do it would to be to install the actual types themselves. So if I bring up uh, the terminal here, and I'll just exit out of that. Now if I run npm install types Google Maps save. So this will install the types for Google Maps so that TypeScript knows what this Google object is. So I'll run that and we'll serve it again. Okay, so it's running without issue now. Uh, we've got the application loaded and it's not complaining about uh, Google anymore. Uh, but the obvious problem now is that we don't have any kind of map and we should. Uh, the reason we can't see anything is just because the uh, we don't have the right styling set up here. So if I just try and find the map, you can see that it's currently, it's got a width of 375, but it's got a height of zero. Uh, so of course we're not going to be able to see it. So I just quickly give that a height in here you can see that the map starting to show there. So what we need to do is give that a style in our home.scss file. We're going to hook into that uh, map ID we created earlier and to set height to 100% and uh, width to 100%. Okay, now you can see that the map is 100% uh, height now and we can see everything. Uh, so as I mentioned, it's centered around Adelaide, and so I can do all the Google Mapsy stuff now. Zoom out, scroll around. I can even switch between map and satellite, uh, and so you, now you can just do whatever you need to do with that map. So you can you can add markers to it. You can go to locations. Um, everything that you expect Google Maps to be able to do, you can do it through Ionic 2. So I'm not going to get into that uh, now, I'm going to end the tutorial there, but uh, if you come into the uh, JavaScript SDK documentation here, you'll be able to find examples on how to do just about everything. Uh, so you can use this to figure out what you need to do, and I also have a few tutorials as I mentioned, I cover things like uh, markers, marker clustering, and a few more things. Uh, so you can check out my tutorials as well, which are specific to Ionic 2. But again, it doesn't matter. It's just the JavaScript SDK. Uh, so there's no difference between doing this in a normal web page or doing it in Ionic 2. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.